A really common Android developer interview question I see is to download and display a remote image given a URL without the use of a library. Almost every Android app is going to be showing images in the app, but they'll almost always use a library such as Glide or Picasso. And so the question here is about peeling back the abstraction and trying to gauge whether you can understand the fundamental building blocks of doing this image loading and downloading from a URL without delegating the work to a library. So what I have here in the starter code is the classic way of downloading an image using Glide. See, so I'm using Glide in the canonical way. We're downloading an image URL, which is coming from my website, and we're putting it into an image view. So really quick, if I go into the activity main.xml, all I have is a single image view here. I've included the Glide library. And also importantly, we're going to need the internet permission, of course, because we're downloading from the internet. So if I run this, then you can see here is the image shown. This is a younger version of me um, in the application. And so the problem now is instead of using Glide, let's achieve the same thing without the use of any kind of image loading library. When you're given a problem like this, I find it's helpful to reflect on what concepts are actually being tested here. And in this interview problem, I would say there are two concepts. First is, do you understand networking primitives? Because we're not using an image loading library, and we also wouldn't use a library like Retrofit here because we're not talking to some RESTful API, we really need to figure out how to construct a URL, connect to it, and download the bytes to create a bitmap for the image. And the second thing being tested is, do you understand threads and how to pass data between them? In Android, you want to avoid doing any heavy work on the UI thread or the main thread. And so we're going to have to do this networking operation on a background thread and then figure out how to get the data back from the background thread to the main thread and actually update the image view. Let's start with that first concept of networking primitives. So let me first comment out the Glide image loading library line. And I'm going to create a function here, which will return to us the actual bitmap, which we can put into the image view. And I'll delegate the work of that into this download bitmap function, pass in the image URL. And this will take in one parameter, which returns a nullable bitmap. And the reason it's nullable is because, of course, with anything with networking, things might go wrong. And if things do go wrong, we'll catch the exception and return null in those cases. I don't expect people to have memorized this. But after doing some Googling, you should be able to figure out how to take an image URL, which is a string, and actually get the bytes at that particular remote resource location. So the very first thing we'll do is open up a connection to this URL. So let's first construct a URL object. We'll pass in the image URL to constructor and then call this method open connection. So this is going to give us back a connection. Next, we'll call connect on this. And now we need to actually, once we've established the connection from this line, we want to get an input stream so we can start reading the bytes at this remote resource. So we'll say con.get input stream. This is going to be an input stream. And now the bitmap factory conveniently takes in this input stream. So I'll say decode stream with the input stream. And this is the bitmap that we want. And we need to make sure to close the input stream just so that we don't leak any memory. And then we'll return the bitmap. And like we talked about, there are a bunch of places where this could go wrong. For example, when you construct the URL, you might get a malformed URL exception. When we are getting the input stream, there's an IO exception or unknown service exception. So you probably want to do more fine-grained error handling here. But just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put this all in a try catch. So all this code will go into the try. And then inside of the catch, we'll just log an exception here, an error. And in, in this case, we'll return null. And one thing that the IDE will help us out with is to lift the return statement out of the try catch. And we just have this last line be the thing that we return. OK, awesome. So this is how we would take the image URL string and actually create a URL object open the connection, and then read the bytes to turn that into a bitmap. So once we have the bitmap, we can simply set that on the image view. 
So if we try this, let's see what actually happens. And you see nothing actually works. And if we open up LogCap, we can try and understand why. I'm filtering for logs from main activity. And we can see that we have an exception, just network on main thread exception. Basically, the Android system doesn't allow you to make a network request on the main thread because of what we talked about before, which is that any heavy operations that will cause jank and a very bad user experience. And so right now it is all happening on the main thread. So, so these lines of code, which are doing this heavy operation need to be moved off to a background thread. However, there is a way to bypass this, which you shouldn't do in production, but there is something called strict mode dot set thread policy. And here we can actually set a policy to allow networking on the main thread and be a bit more permissive just for the sake of actually seeing that this is functional. I'll say strict mode dot thread policy dot builder permit network dot build. So we're basically telling the Android system, okay, ignore this issue of network on main thread. So when we load our application in the emulator, we do see the image load, which is amazing, but we are doing this work on the main thread. So you you might notice the UI is not being responsive. So let's address that next. So back in the code, let me comment out these two lines because this is, I'll call it approach one, which works, but isn't ideal. So now we're gonna do approach two, which is create a thread to do the image download, then send the bitmap back to the main thread. So what we'll do here is create a thread and we're gonna pass in start equal true, which basically means start the work right away. And note that when we do this, we're creating a new thread, which by definition, because there's only one UI thread, this new thread that we create will be a background thread. We do what we want. And this takes in a Lambda and the work that we put in here is the work that that background thread will do. And just to prove that I can put a log statement here. I'll say current thread and let's print out the current thread name. And here I want to do actually something quite similar to what we just did earlier, which is downloading the bitmap using the method that we had. So here's a graphical representation of what we're doing. We started our program in the main thread. We started a background thread to actually download the bitmap from that remote URL. And now the question is, how can we take that bitmap that we got and send it back to the main thread? The way we can easily pass the work or messages between threads is through the handler class in Android. A handler is associated with a message queue, which is basically a list of work or messages that the handler should process. And the handler will also have an associated thread. So what we'll do is create a handler object called UI handler, which is associated with the main thread. And the way we'll do that is in the constructor of the handler, we pass in a looper and the looper we'll pass in is a special one, which is called main looper. And if we look at the documentation here, this is the application's main looper on the UI thread. And so now any work that we post to this handler will be run on the UI thread, which is exactly what we want to do here. Inside of this back background thread that we're executing here, we can take the UI handler and post some work to it. It'll post a runnable and this will take in a runnable we can just implement this as a Lambda here. And the code we write for this runnable will be running on the main thread, which we can validate by copying a log statement and this checking current thread in UI handler should be main. And now we will just set the bitmap on the image view. Okay, let's try it and open up log cat. Okay, so it seems like functionally we are the same, which is good because we're correctly doing this work on the background thread now. And if we look at logcat, we can see that this first log statement we have is from thread two, which is some background thread. And then inside of the UI handler.post, we're posting this runnable. That runnable is being executed on the main thread. So that's how we're able to communicate back and forth between the main thread and background threads. There's a lot more to learn about with handlers, loopers, and message queues. I'll leave a link to a video in the description, which explains it really well. The other option is you could have a message that you send between threads and you could add associated data into that using a bundle, but all that will be explained in the video. Finally, there's one more good approach to handling this problem in Kotlin, which is coroutines. 
And I have a video which explains coroutines in much more detail. I'll leave a link for that if you're interested. But this actually turns out to be a very elegant and simple solution. First thing we'll do is in the build.gradle file, let's add in the library for coroutines. Tap on sync now. And let's comment out approach two. And what we're going to do here is create a coroutine. And the work of actually fetching and downloading that bitmap is going to be on the IO dispatcher because it's input output bound. And then inside this coroutine is where we are going to do actually something quite similar to what we had before. So let's log the current thread, which at this point should be a background thread. We'll download the bitmap. And now we want to go back to the main thread so we can update the image view with this bitmap that we received. And we'll do that by saying dispatchers.main and pass in a lambda here, image view dot set image bitmap with that bitmap. So notice how similar this is actually to what we had before with the handler approach. Let's run it. And what we'd expect is that this should be a background thread versus a main thread. And we have the same functional result, which is that the image view has the bitmap correctly. Okay, so we do see that. Let's open up Logcat. And we are seeing current thread is default dispatcher worker two, some background thread. And once we get back into with context dispatchers main, we are back on the UI thread and we can successfully update the image view. So what we've shown in this video are three different approaches to downloading an image from a image URL and displaying it in your Android app without the use of an image loading library. I do want to call out though that there are quite a few things that we would still want to improve on and a lot of functionality that the Glide or Picasso libraries give us that we definitely haven't done here, which is why libraries are so useful. They embed a lot more functionality. For example, the image libraries give us caching. So if we're downloading the same image multiple times, they'll reserve some amount of space on the client in the app to avoid downloading that image again and again. The other thing that is really valuable with an image loading library is that it will do downsampling for you. So if you're downloading a really large image from the web, it's wasteful to actually read all those pixels in and you might actually be using excess, excessive memory. So image libraries will handle the downsampling for us. And there's a lot more that image loading libraries provide as well. For example, placeholder images while the image is being loaded, transformations like rounded corners, and a lot more that we don't have time to cover here. And that's why most apps will just use a library instead of trying to roll their own. But it's healthy to look behind the covers and try to understand what's happening. And it's also a common interview question. That's all I had for this video. If you have any questions, drop a comment. I'd love to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.